Hello, everybody. How are you? I am Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy. And we have got this fabulous group of people here, and we're going to continue talking about finding your roots. We've got Mary Kirchirati from MKR Genealogy. Hi, Mary. Hi there. <laughs> Good to have you here. Good to we've be here. Got, <laughs> we've got Melissa Barker, our archive lady. Hi, Melissa. Hello, everybody. Good to be here. So good to see you. And we've got Dan Earl, our family history guy. Hi, Dan. Hey, glad to be here. Good to, good to have you here. Well, we're going to talk about, uh, we're talking about season eight, and tonight we're going to talk about um, episode five, which was talking about Mexican genealogy. And nobody on this panel, <laughs> <laughs> unless, you, you know, no, I don't think anybody on this panel has got Mexican genealogy, but that doesn't mean you don't watch the show. You don't look through it and go, eh, they're talking about Mexican genealogy. I don't have any Mexican genealogy, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna watch it. Because honestly, all the record sets may be different for different countries. Your basic thought process and your basic methodology is gonna be the same. And so you can learn all sorts of different things. And you'll learn a lot of cool history, I think, from Finding Your Roots. There were things on this episode that I had no, I had no clue about. And so there's so many, so many different things. So we're going to start with Mario Lopez, which most of us know from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> so, um, and, you when know, he announced him as a TV host. I was like, host of what? He's from Saved by the Bell. I know, <laughs> those dimples. We all know, we all I know. know. <laughs> Oh, no, Mario. When, when was Saved by the Bell on? I think I'm thinking that's after I married, and so I had a kid and didn't never watch it. It was um, 90s. 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I yeah, married in '88. After that, my I didn't kids, get TV kids, for years. <laughs> <laughs> my kids all watched it, and you know yeah. they they rebooted it a couple of times and things like that. But you know, it was very interesting because he he knew that his his parents were from Mexico. You know, there was no shock. He there in, in the United States now. So what they did was they, uh, for his family, he wanted to know more about his Mexican roots. He, he knew um, he, his family in, in America, but he wanted to know about um, his, his family in Mexico and how, how they got there and then how they came to the States and all those kind of things. Um, so he knows his, he knew his paternal grandfather and he knew his paternal grandfather had immigrated to the United States. But what was interesting that he didn't know is that his grandfather had been here before. <laughs> his grandfather had been here before and then got sent back because they found a document that his grandfather had signed trying to get back into the country. And he's like, wait a second, but he was already here. But when you um, learn about the history, as they were talking about, they were very lenient at one point in American history of having people from Mexico come in and take jobs, mm -hmm. especially during World War I, because our soldiers were all gone, right? And so it was like, we need, we need people, we need people. And then the soldiers come back and guess what happens? We don't need you people anymore. And so they started deporting people. And so that happened from different time, you know, during the depression, it happened different times in our country's history. So that was interesting for him to see that. And he said, which I love, I loved because we all say this, don't we? I wish I had talked to him about it when he was alive. Yes. I had no idea about that story. So um, that was, that was really interesting that, uh, that he didn't know that, but then he had come back and then he did, he did, there was a paper. Um, if you guys have done any naturalization work, there was a the paperwork where he was declaring his uh, intention to become a citizen. And so that gave him a lot of information on where he was born um, and, and all those kinds of things. So uh, they were then actually, they were able to go back four generations in Mexico, four generations, um, which I think is interesting. But what they found was they found that his great, I hope we got the right generations, great, 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 great grandfather, they found his, no, yeah, his, mm -hmm. was it his grandfather's uh, baptismal record, which had his parents' name on it. But then what, do you remember what it said on there that he was, what was it, natural? Yeah. Natural born? Natural child, yeah. <laughs> yes. He is natural born. And he's like, well, what does that mean? You know, what is natural born? You know, 
Wasn't gave birth naturally. That, that alien <laughs> didn't need any help getting no medicine. She just, you know, had that baby. Uh, actually, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why it's so important. It's another thing that we can learn, no matter whose genealogy they're doing, whose research, no matter what country, is that when we see a term, we cannot assume what that term means. And we've got to look it up. And what it really meant was that he was born out of wedlock. They were not mm-hmm. married when when his mm-hmm. grandfather was born. And he was like, oh, that shocked him, you know. But I think it also teaches us to um, to study each and every document that we have on our ancestors. I know myself, um, you know, it's over the years, because you learn and you grow as a genealogist. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been true. doing this for 33 years. And so from when I was doing it at the beginning, um, I gather documents and things like that. But then there's been times where I've gone back to those documents and I thought, well, mm-hmm. I didn't see that before, you know, yes. and so it's, I, I always yes. teach, teach genealogists to take time to go back, look at those documents that you know you already had, you think you've already read them, maybe even transcribe them word for yes. word. A lot of times Absolutely. if we're typing them word for word, that gets into your mind. But I have found things on documents that I didn't catch the first time or oh, even yeah. the second time. And so yeah. like we you didn't said, know we're we're supposed, we didn't, well, right. yeah, lots of times you don't catch things because you haven't seen that name or whatever on right. it before. And you think it's yeah. just some random person in the record. Right. And then you realize right. it's a brother-in-law. So. And, you, yeah. and you maybe get have gotten that document for a particular reason. Yes. And so if you only look at the information for that reason and you uh-huh. file it away. Well, when right. you pull it out again, there may be <laughs> stuff. Well, wait a minute. I didn't see that. I don't remember that before. So yeah, exactly. go back and look at those documents yeah. again. You might yeah. be surprised. We, we didn't know we were supposed to catch it. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the problem. We didn't know we were supposed to catch it until we get some more education, right? Right. Well, he, an, an interesting thing too on, on this, um, this ancestor was that he was marked as a Spaniard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Mario thought that was really interesting. And why would that be important? And, and uh, they brought out a, a picture of, I've never seen this before. It's just because I don't do this kind of research, but it was a cast painting, which I thought was so mm-hmm. interesting. And they said there, it, it was an actual painting and it was people's different shades and colors mm-hmm. and who would make this and who would make that. And they yeah. would actually go and look at them and decide on it. He said there were 16 different paintings and they would just decide. It's like there are early census workers that would just look at people and say, oh, they're white, they're mulatto, they're, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That so, part was so yeah. interesting to me yeah. because yeah. siblings mm-hmm. in a family could have different collect- oh. co- uh, complexions. Right. And yes. so uh, you're, you're, you could be in one cast and yeah. your full sibling because they're darker or lighter could be exactly. totally different, which, how does that work out? I mean, yeah. basically, yeah, you're the favored son because I guess, you've got, you know, right. I don't know. Yeah. Because their whole lives depended on what that label was, right. you know, what they could do with their lives depended on that label. And they said the number one um, group that, that they had was Spaniards and then Anglos. And then of course, um, your Africans, because they were brought over to be slaves. And so you've got this conglomeration of people. And so I, I can't even yeah. imagine who sat and painted and said, okay, you are this. <laughs> or who decided. Yeah. Well, I was, you know, if there's one historical truth, that's money talks, right? And so oh, yes. whoever's making this decision, I mean, if you if you grease the palms with a couple of, you know, a couple hundred pesos. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. all of a sudden somebody with maybe a darker complexion that would have been in a lower caste is all of a sudden yeah. Spaniard. So that that calls into exactly. question the validity of, of that document and hanging too much on a particular caste that an ancestor was because, mm-hmm. you know, especially if it was a government official, you know, oh, I mean, yeah. not like oh, yeah. you know, any country on <laughs> earth is immune from corrupt <laughs> government officials that are willing to take bribes. Yeah. Um, exactly. You know, if, if that was their social standing, you, you got to believe that that's happening, that that's going on. Oh, of so, course, yeah. of course. From from this uh, great great grandfather, they traced back eleven generations. Eleven, well, eleven generations from Mario. They got back eleven generations, and they discovered that um, this grandfather, this eleventh generation grandfather, he had uh, come to 
Mexico from Spain. So that's where that Spanish blood came from. But he, he didn't come on holiday. He didn't, come, you know, at a most, you know, he came over as a soldier. He came over as a, um, to conquer the people, the indigenous people of Mexico. And that's, that's how he, he got there. And I thought it was very interesting that um, at first it was like, yeah, you know, and then they're men, right? And then they're women and they would marry the women. And he'd go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, or, you know, finally clicked. Not necessarily was it, you know, a marriage that happened. So um, I thought that was a really good, good history lesson for me mm. that I, things I didn't know. Um, ways to look at historical context to find out why, how your ancestors could have gotten somewhere you know, what, what, what's the push and pull? Mary, were you going to say something? No, no, just. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and so I, I think. I, I'll I, just say, I agree yeah. with you, Sherry. One thing that this show does is it, it does a really good job at putting their guests, um, ancestors in a historical context mm -hmm. to tell mm -hmm. um, why, I mean, they may not know exactly why, but they'll, they'll talk about the different historical things that have happened in that particular country, that particular area right. of the country or whatever, that, um, that they're, why their ancestors did what they did, or could have been why they acted the way they acted yes. or whatever. And so this, this show does a really good job of that. And I enjoy that part of it because I really like history. Um, oh, and, me it, too. And, and, it, and it encourages me to do the same thing in my genealogy. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. so that's something that if you watch this show, you know, yeah. it's, it's important for us to put our ancestors in their time. Yes. For many reasons, really. For many but, reasons. Um, because sometimes I, I'm guilty of trying to bring my ancestors into my time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think we all do that. And, all and my, our ancestors are, are difficult to understand when you bring them into your time. Right. Uh, it just is. Yep. And so I think that's a good, a really good lesson for all of us, no matter if you've been doing this for a week or for 33 years. Exactly. You need to keep your ancestors in their time yeah, and then go time. and meet them in that time. And <laughs> I love that. I love that. I mean, you know, that's kind of what yeah. I have to do. I have to kind of meet them. Yeah. I read books about their time. Yes. Uh, I look and read articles and blogs and things about mm -hmm. their time. So I put myself, yeah. I, if it's like, if you had a, um, a time machine, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, or, you know, my husband's a Star Trek geek. And so it's like, you know, <laughs> get in that transporter and go back in time. There we go. Yeah. But, you know, but I think it's important. And I think it, for me, it really helps me to understand my ancestors better. And it actually right. gives my ancestors comes more alive to me. Oh, exactly. Well, I thought it was interesting that this particular ancestor of his, this 11th great grandfather, he was on the country's flag, their, their mm -hmm. standard once they took over and, and Spain ran the country. He's on their coat of arms, I should say. And so that, that's really interesting to have yeah. that. I mean, you know, not many of us have that, but then you've got that balance of why was he, you know, it's just, it's all that in history, you know, it's just mm -hmm. stuff that we need to to balance and just say he you know put him in his time but how cool he's on this thing <laughs> i've got this coat of arms with my ancestor um his maternal roots are, are a lot the same um his mother was from mexico he remembers his great grandmother and that was so cute his great grandmother had come and, and lived with them and she, he just had some really fond memories of his great grandmother but um they've got a the story one of the stories is that, uh, was it him that, um, I'm going to make sure I've got the right, the, the, the right stories. Cause we had four stories from, uh, Mexico. <laughs> so make sure I've got the right one here. Um, oh, they found her father's birth certificate. That's right. And so that told his parents and they found out that, um, some of them had come and lived in Texas for a while. Is that him or is that her? Was it her? But I know that one branch one branch came in um, earlier than anybody thought of his uh, of his maternal family line, and this person came in and Mary did some extra work on this one. This this person came in on a ship from Mexico because Mexico was having a war and people were leaving. They were mm -hmm. fleeing. They were refugees from this war, and he came in on a ship. And so, what did you do, Mary? <laughs> So he, the ancestor, he married it. Yes, what did you do? <laughs> I did. I married it. Um, the ancestor came in, um, in, in the 18 teens, um, mm -hmm. and sailed on a ship from Mexico, from, um, La Paz 
to yeah. San Francisco. Yes. And of course, my I immediately perk up because yeah. Um, yeah. my mother was born in San Francisco. I was born in Marin County. So anything in California, I'm just like glomming on. Um, and so um, that struck me for a couple reasons. And if I can share my screen, I just want to sure. show yeah. one thing. Um, Do you need okay. me to give you permission? You got it. Okay. I got it. You got so it. can you guys okay. see this screen here? Yeah, I got I a couple pictures up. So this, they showed this um, image on the left. Um, okay. Um, you've, you've got one image on top of, of another. On top right, of the I'm other. Doing, yeah. Right. But I'm, I'm doing that on purpose. Okay. And I'll show you Good. why. Um, okay. So this just for a sec. Okay. So they showed this little bit and I, you know, I've mm -hmm. got my pause button on my DVR. And so I can <laughs> really <laughs> catch all the details. Um, and rewind, it gets a detail. So um, I found this ship and I was looking for the passenger manifest and this is what they showed on uh -huh. TV. And it was this family coming in. Mm -hmm. um, but I want you to show, I want to show you how, well, there was a second page that they didn't show, which had some interesting details. It said that they were going to go see, um, you know, I feel like I have too much here. Um, the um, the son or the brother. So this, the, the image on the left shows the names of the people, um, Epic Menio and um, mm -hmm. Jesus P and Belen and Carmen, pardon my pronunciation, um, but, um, and they said that they're going to see the, the father and brother, which was interesting and it gave the address. So of course I followed up on that, but I didn't find much, but it took me a long time to find this record. And I want to show you why, um, and where's my little ancestry window that I just had up? Okay, so look at this. Um, I was looking for Trasvina. I mean, it's really clear on the passenger manifest. Mm -hmm. T R A S V I N A. Mm -hmm. um, ancestry last name. has yeah. Tansvina. T A N S. Oh. Um, and it does not sound X the same way. It mm -hmm. does not come up. If you wow. search for trans, Trasvina, um, and so I ended up having to pause it so many times so I could get the name and the date of the ship, uh -huh. um, and I would never have found this if I did not know I was looking for that record. Mm -hmm. So when you are searching for your name, mm -hmm. there may be names out there, and you are not getting the hit of the record, because you know it's <laughs> everything you've seen has got an mm -hmm. R in that, mm -hmm. and so whoever's indexed it just miss that R. And yeah. so sometimes just for the heck of it, even if you don't know that there's a record, <laughs> throw in another letter, yeah. throw in an R or a T after the N or something yeah. to see if you don't get a hit on, yeah. on that's a that's record a, that is your favorite. That's a really good tip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That um, is really, really good. Okay, so I'm gonna stop share. But that's a I, really good tip, Mary, because you know, yeah, like yeah. just like you showed it, it, it's not even a thing of handwriting. It's typed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so you think, well, surely the transcriber who was doing this can read and they can know what letters are, but yeah. something We're happened. Human beings. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Make that's mistakes. the thing we, that's what we need yep. to think about is that we're anything that's being transcribed. It's being anything. It's human beings and we all make mistakes. Yeah. And so and, they just saw it that way. And that's how they transcribed yeah. it. So that's great. Yeah. Great tip. And seriously, I, I thought that would be a much easier word to find than <laughs> Epigmenio. Because how many ways can you mess up the spelling of Epigmenio? Yeah. yeah. Tres, Tresvina, but yeah. Um, yeah, I find a whole bunch of Epigmenios anyway. Um, so that part was interesting. And then I totally got sucked into um, <laughs> because they showed a picture of a boat. And really, I think yeah. it was just for a little local color in the story. Uh, and I showed a picture of people at a but it got party. Mary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the boat totally interested me because my grandfather was a marine engineer and worked on the ferry boats that crossed San Francisco mm -hmm. Bay from Marin County to San Francisco. And I'm looking at that boat and the hills in the background. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, that looks so much like Marin. I mean, I pulled out every single, I've got a whole bunch of books in my house. Um, I, and I couldn't find a picture of that boat in it. Huh. Um, I even found a book, um, Fairies of San Francisco Bay that Seattle Public Library had. So I put it on hold. I had it shipped <laughs> to my local branch of the library and I got it. Yesterday. I still couldn't find it, but that's how I would research it. And I did. Yes. Research it. 
Um, right, that's how you and, did. And right. maybe, maybe there was a credit. They, they just the credits are like in white on the picture, yeah. and they go by yeah. so fast they're really hard yes. to read. And my pause button isn't that precise. <laughs> um, so anyway, I didn't ever find the ship, but I was very, oh. very curious. Was that one of my? But that's okay because yeah, you showed us steps. how you showed yes. us how to do yeah. it. You know, and sometimes you do all the right steps and you don't find it. So that's, you know, that is what it is too in genealogy research. What I thought was really interesting about this side of the family too was that they then this him and he and his siblings came, got work, and then they brought their parents mm-hmm. and the rest of the family with them. And they looked like they were quite well to do. There was a very nice photo from like 1915 yeah. or something of the whole family, and they were doing well. And then the bottom fell out. Okay. Um, they said about 19, uh, 1918, the bottom just fell out. And they had to go back home because yeah, there was yeah. the jobs weren't there and there where they were in California, but Mexico was having a boom. <laughs> so they go back, they go back to Mexico and, and then so we're talking about, you know, this side of his family has come to America. He didn't know about it because he ended up going back to Mexico and then they came back. And that's the side yeah. he knows, the ones that came back. Yeah. So I just think that's that's really interesting that he can have that going on. And of course. Nobody tells the stories. Nobody, you know, it would it's good, it would be interesting to hear how his family felt about that. You know, I've got this picture. Did you know that they were here before? And they're going, a picture? We didn't know anything about a picture, you know, all those kind of things. So um Dan, I was gonna talk about oh go ahead, Dan. Dan wants to talk. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Just, no, 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 it's fine. Um similarly with, with my family, so obviously my, my family didn't come from, from Mexico, they came from Eastern Europe. And mm-hmm. when I was looking at the ship manifest and just another plug for looking at the whole thing, my great grandparents, so my grandmother's parents, when they emigrated, um, th- it said, had you ever been to the U.S. before? And I just thought, always assumed that they'd never been, but they were mm-hmm. in the U.S. for three years prior oh. to the First World War, and they had already had their first daughter with them. And mm-hmm. so, but there's no listing of her on any ship manifest or anything it's just the two of them so that the Mm -hmm. implication is that they must have left her back in Hungary Mm -hmm. and then they came here to to live with my great grandmother's brother and they were here for a few years and then she was pregnant again um you know with my grandmother's older sister and then they just decided to go back and then and then we have these letters that we've translated of them, just the hardships of them trying to save enough money to come back yeah. to the U.S. and eventually yeah. were able to come as as refugees after World right. War One. So it's, it's wow. so so Mario's story yeah. really kind of that part of it really resonated of the they were yeah. here then they left and they had to come back and just all these hurdles that they had in place and um, you know just you know mm-hmm. it, it just goes back to that even though I don't have Mexican roots doesn't mean that I can't learn something. Exactly. from watching a show on Mexican genealogy and uh, absolutely just, just watching every episode and picking it apart yeah. so. and that's a good lesson too to think about because uh-huh. you know as genealogists we we're taught we're taught to start with ourselves mm-hmm. and to go backwards well if you're doing that and you hit you hit an immigration <laughs> point well <laughs> most would stop well that's when they immigrated yeah. you know but now you know you need to go the whole way you need to go yeah back to when they were born or beginning or keep going you know don't mm-hmm. think okay well here it is this is when they immigrated like because we've right. seen like with dan's example and with Mar- uh, mario's example we've seen now uh, examples of of other things and so it's important to do the whole history um, right exactly answers. and i was going to add too dan mentioned that they left their child mm-hmm. and either last week's show or one before we were talking about somebody whose child got left and we're thinking you know how did how could they why would they leave their child and that's why we love when you watch and you leave comments because somebody left a comment and said that they'd had that in their family and what happened was the child was really sick and couldn't make the voyage Mm -hmm. and so they left them hoping that they would be able to get them sooner than they actually could get them and so that could have been the reason too and I thought that thank you. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I like it when we get comments that maybe we didn't think of when, when we were uh, discussing. Mary? There are so many interesting details, and I've got a passenger manifest from, I think, I forget if it's 1848 or 1849, 
really not many details and it's easy to sometimes miss things, but Mm -hmm, there was mm -hmm. a family story that this couple had a baby and it um, died on board the ship and had Mm -hmm. to be buried at sea. Mm -hmm. And so on the passenger manifest, it does say dead on the right hand Mm -hmm. side in the column next wow. to this, I mean on the other oh. side of the page you have to read all yeah. the way across yeah that's yeah. another Two. thing next you know the, yes. we had to read all the way down and all the way yep. across <laughs> yeah all the way yeah. across it's a bunch of ditto marks all the way behind down. sometimes yeah. we don't go forward and there's a back page that they've digitized right. and we completely well, miss a lot of times page, like yeah. yeah on our ancestry in some of these places when they digitize the records I mean if there's more than one page or if there's a back and front Mm-hmm. You'll see the main page, but you need to click to the next page. Exactly. Just I always I teach people. I said, Yeah, I don't care if you know there's only one page. Click to the next well, page. Never well, know. <laughs> I got that second page that said where this family was yeah. going. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And this even on this ship, I mean, my my family story was that they came with mm-hmm. my great great grandparents and my great great grandfather's brother and the baby that died. That was the story. Her parents and siblings were on that ship on a different page. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. And so without looking at the whole manifest, I don't know that I would have found them. You so have found them. yeah, you know, anyway, you really want to, just because your family traveled together, even you don't, right. they might not have been, you know, somebody had to go yeah. back to their, you know, cabin or Who whatever, knows? get yeah. something, yeah. left something. And so they yeah. wind up, they got split up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dan, you had a you had a comment? Yeah, back to, to Melissa's point about always, you know, looking one way or the other. When sometimes when we look at a record, we look at it with blinders on and we think that's what all those records must look like. Yes. If yes. We don't look at others in that series and that sequence. Yes. We don't know if something on that record is anomalous or not. That's um, right. So we don't know if there's if that box is always checked or if it's so rare that we're looking at, you know, the hope mm. diamond of genealogy and we just don't know it because we have nothing yeah. to compare it to. It's like, we're looking that at is a, a good point. Yes. And so I like always, that. Always yeah. look at the records that come yes. before and after it in that record yeah. set and just try to do a sampling. So that way, if something is bizarre on yeah. your family, you can go, that's, that's interesting. I need to, I need to, <laughs> you know, I need to pay attention to that. That's, that's, that's a great point too. And of course they had to do the DNA and they did because because of the situation in Mexico and the different people coming in and that they they did the DNA and um, so they did their admixture for both and Mario's was 56% European, uh, 41% indigenous, which he just kind of blew his mind, you know, a little bit that he had that much European and but what really got to him is 3% sub-Saharan African Hmm. because the Spanish brought Yes. They not only uh, had the um, indigenous, I can't talk, indigenous mm-hmm. people as slaves, but they had Africans as slaves. And then all of those people were intermarrying. And so, or other things were yes. going on back, you know, so interacting. Not, yeah. they were interacting, maybe not consensual. Some was, <laughs> some were some. And so anyway, so I think he thought that was pretty interesting that, that he had mm-hmm. all of that, that made up who he was. I think he generally, generally had a good time. I think that um, he was taking it all in um, and kind of like, this is really interesting. This is really cool kind of that happened way back then kind of thing, you know, and just, you know, um, yeah. and, and he's, and, and like we've, we've said before, you're not responsible for what your ancestors did. No, you know, you're just, you're just not responsible. No. For- uh, did we, you know, um, with the, um, and I can't remember which episode it was, uh, where they talked about that people in England do not do the DNA testing as much as mm-hmm. Americans. I don't mm-hmm. know that they mentioned that in this episode, but I, I wondered at the time, I wonder about how, what's the percentage of people that do their DNA in Mexico? Oh, that's a good, far, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, they brought that up that in another episode. That would be a episode. good question. It's, yeah, and so I wondered about that. Yeah, that would be, that would be, if, if anybody watching knows, we would yeah. please put it in the comments, because we would really like to know. Let's move on to, um, Melissa, now, I'm not a Saturday Night Live. I mean, I used to watch it when I was a kid, and yeah, me too. it's on too late for me. So anyway, <laughs> she's on there. Um, Melissa Villasenor, um, same same kind of story. Her parents were from Mexico and came over, and um, she had uh, oh gosh, um, her. See, the, they started with her paternal line, 
and they found that her um, her great grandmother, great great grandmother Mercedes, um, they came to Texas. Her, she and her family came to Texas first, um, and that was in 1908. They found a birth record in 1908, um, and they, they so they were here, and uh, her, her um, she died. Her Mercedes mother died at like 27. And then her father married again, and then she was raised by another grandmother. Um, so they had a really, really, really hard life. But after he married again, they ended up uh, going back to uh, Mexico. And Jesus, the the um, the husband, her husband, Mercedes' husband, was shot and killed in a like a bar fight or something. And so that was really, really sad for her to find out. Um, he was shot and killed, it says, in 1931. Um, so it was right after that. So he was killed here. It was right after that that they moved back. No, they were there, and then they moved back here. I'm sorry. I got to read my notes better. <laughs> in 1947, they moved back here. But one of the really cool things is for her is they found her uh, citizenship document with the picture on it and everything. And she knew, she knows this, this woman, you know? And so mm -hmm. how fun for her to see that photo and see the information that she, when she became a citizen. So I thought that was really cool. And you, you could see that she really appreciated getting that document. Mm -hmm. It's fun to get these documents of people that you knew. It's one thing to <laughs> yeah. learn about new people, but to find new things out about people that you knew, that's really fun. Yeah, and the fact she did, I mean, she was a middle-aged woman when yes. she was naturalized. And yes. it, it, it that, you know, was something obviously very important to yes. her that, that yes. she do that. And that was really, really neat to see. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought so too. And she was like, that's her picture. Yeah, that's her picture. It was so cool. It was really cool. But, you know, she had the same, the same kind of background. She's got Spanish and it was the same type of story. They went far back and same kind of thing, conquistadors coming over and deciding they have to, you know, teach the people to, to live the way they want them to live. Um, and they were able to go back so far uh, with Catholic church records with her uh, um, several, several genera generations back. Um, there was a baptismal record, just all sorts of things that we want to find, you know, um, it's interesting that they were finding baptismal records because they were church records and not the birth mm -hmm. records. Yeah. yeah. But what I really liked too about these records was it would say, it would say the husband's name. It would, it had the parent's name and say where they were from. It gives, it gave a lot more information than what we would get in those days. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yes, Dan. Well, I don't know if this is true for all predominantly Catholic countries, Mm -hmm. But for my Catholic ancestors in a lot of their countries, there wasn't a civil registration of birth mm -hmm. because the church mm -hmm. record was get, considered yeah. the as valid as the mm. government record where the government uh, that baptismal record um, because it happened typically within a, a few days of birth. Um, mm -hmm. So I noticed that with a lot of the Eastern European research that I've done for my Catholic ancestors is that there's no civil birth register until a certain year usually in the late 1800s, early 1900s, where they uh -huh. say, okay, now we're going to have a civil, civil recording of births mm -hmm. um, yes. in addition to um, the, the sort of more ecclesiastical recording of birth. So I, I don't know if that's just... That's probably... Yeah. Well, Samira, yeah, governments probably. didn't didn't yeah. often um, record births. They would record marriages um, because they had to do with property, that mm -hmm. legal thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that marriage records often get recorded way earlier than birth records because there could be property involved in the government's. Mm -hmm. And I think they that. saw marriage records as more of a contract. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. But but a birth is just whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a time. It's just a yeah. so They didn't record them. Right? Like, like, anyway, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the church, yeah, does record them. So like in Ireland, huh. you would find, mm -hmm. I mean, civil registration of births didn't start until 1864. Mm -hmm. but you can find if you're lucky which i'm not but if you're lucky you might find <laughs> catholic birth re or baptism records in the someplace 1780s of course the places i want they don't happen no, of course not he's gone but you know <laughs> of course not no of course isn't all of our luck right well they found with her um back to her 12th great-grandfather 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. We just look at that and we go, what? Mm-hmm. Anyhow, so, but it was just like we said, it was the same kind of thing. He'd come from Spain. He came with the army. He, um, you know, they, they showed a record for both of them, I think, where they were reading the records, but they never mm-hmm. said where that came from. It almost looked like print, like from a book. And I didn't mm-hmm. see where that came from. And they were in, I think they both were in Spanish. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it was a history or what it was, but he was actually, Mary, would you guys say well, something? Well, I just, if you're listening, Henry Louis Gates, <laughs> just get a blog and just tell us where you came up with those records. Yes. Be we all just want the citations. Want they want, want to know. The, yes. Um, yeah. Wouldn't so, that be anyway, great? That would, be, that, would be, today. that would be fabulous, right? So anyway, um, so it's the same kind of thing. And they found... They found a baptismal record for one of his sons, but the mother was African. Mm-hmm. And so she learned that it was his slave and that, that he was a slave, not a slave owner. Not only did he go over there and, and, and deal with gold and you know silver, but he also he also owned slaves. And so you know, it was interesting their their reactions because hers was more maybe she's she's a woman and so she understands. Not that men wouldn't understand, but she understands what that mm-hmm. meant for the woman that that was not a consensual <laughs> relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but she kind of reacted a little bit more, oh, kind of mm. almost like oh, you know, where he was like, okay, I get it. That was back in that <laughs> day. But I mean, he may have processed it differently afterwards. But. Um, yeah, and, and and we've got to realize that as we research and we go through different periods of history, we're going to find that kind of thing. We're mm. going to find things that we don't like. We're going to find that our ancestors did things that we'd rather just maybe forget, but we can't. We can't write that out of their story because then we're taking history out of the story. And so it's, it's hard. It can be really mm. hard. Mary, were you going to say something? Well, I, I just, gonna... there's... I don't know. I, you know, so many people and not, not everybody, but it's like, oh, they're so proud of the, the good things that their ancestors yes. did. And, yes. oh, that's where I get these good qualities. Uh-huh. Um, and, and it's, you know, what M- Melissa was talking about, just, you got to go back to their times. I mean, the times uh-huh. that they lived were not, the value system was not exactly the, and the calculus and didn't, he say, that it is today. didn't he say to mario lopez he did, he certainly wasn't um abraham lincoln <laughs> yeah he did say that yeah <laughs> because you're right you know, Mary. yeah <laughs> another thing that you do too when um you when you don't acknowledge those histories or you mm-hmm. sweep it under the rug or you hide it or you mm-hmm. just don't mm-hmm. you just ignore it or whatever you have to remember that you know not only are you ignoring your own ancestors history but you're ignoring what your ancestors did to whomever they did it to yeah this is oh that's such i love that that is such a good point and so i think you're doing a disservice to both of them because i think i'm a firm believer in that you should know your history so you don't repeat it i mean not that Mm -hmm. we're going to repeat slavery Mm -hmm. but i just think that it when you ignore or you don't give that history the due diligence that it needs Mm -hmm. you're also not doing it for the people that they're doing it to whether because i have we have ancestors that i researched that were murdered or that were that did Mm -hmm. bad things to other people for whatever reason and i document those stories because the other people are remembered as well exactly their stories they need to be remembered their stories need to be told and if we if we hide then their stories aren't being told, right. aren't being told truthfully. Yeah. My that's, husband, that's I mean, made a comment during the show when Mario Lopez was kind of um, thinking about mm-hmm. the, the things that his ancestor did that we would not mm-hmm. agree with doing now. Right. And my husband said, our great, great grandchildren are going to do the same thing. You drove a car <laughs> and, and look at what that did to the environment or you did yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to be yeah, a couple of generations, absolutely. the things that we are doing right now. Yes. Yeah. We don't know which ones necessarily. We don't know. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. are going to yeah. be horrible things <laughs> that nobody, I mean, our great, great grandchildren will not want to mm-hmm. be associated with something 
that that I have done, that we're doing. whatever that might be. His, and, you know, his and that's grand, why I his encourage... grandson will have a show and say to Sam Andrew, <laughs> "Did you know that he drove a?" <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I encourage genealogists to to journal, to write their yeah. own story now and then put in there, why did I drive a car or why did I do this? But today we it's hard for us to understand why we would have to explain that. Mm -hmm. But we should at least leave a little bit of our feelings, a little bit of our thoughts. So that, sure. you know, wouldn't it have been, been nice if our ancestors did that for us? Oh gosh, wouldn't it have been? You wouldn't know. it have been? So, but Mary, that's a good point, Mary, that your husband made. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Is there anything else from these uh, two episodes? I know I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot about Mexican history that I didn't know, you know, before. And, and, but like you said at the beginning, it translates into all of the yeah. research that we're all doing. We exactly. can, you know, yeah. And so I, I was glad to be able to, to see that part of it and learn from yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we want. We want stories and we want documents mm -hmm. so that we can tell the whole story, not just the documents, because, you know, it's great to find them, but we want the story. We want to know why that document was created, what was going on, so that we can learn the stories of our ancestors. So we would love to hear from you. Do you have any, any, anything to add? Some of our questions, can you answer them? <laughs> we would really appreciate that, especially if you do uh, Mexican genealogy. Maybe you can add something to our discussion in the chat. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Gen Friends. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.